So I've been following the Catholic apologetics world for some time now, and while I've only recently entered it myself with a series of videos on the arguments for the existence of God, I've already started to notice a common theme in the objections that are raised against apologetics. You see, the Catholic Church, as most people know, has a lot of doctrines. And this is really true for Christianity more generally. If you're going to be a Christian, there's a lot of things you have to believe. You have to believe in the resurrection, in the Trinity, in the infallibility of the Bible, or the Trinity, things like that. Did I say the Trinity twice? That's not important. The list could really go on and on of things you have to believe if you're going to call yourself a Christian. And I think the fundamental mistake, the number one misconception that both Catholics and non-Catholics alike have about Catholic apologetics is that they think that the apologist has to prove all of these doctrines at once. If whatever argument the apologist is giving at the moment doesn't prove everything from the existence of God to the assumption of Mary, it's thought that he's not saying anything of importance. He's not establishing anything important. And like I said, this is an attitude that I hear from both Catholics and non-Catholics alike sometimes. But when raised by non-Catholics, it sometimes takes the form of an objection. I'm going to read a few comments that have been left on my channel that I hope will illustrate the mentality I'm talking about. Now, these are all left on videos that I've done on the arguments for the existence of God. So these are all on videos where I try to argue from philosophy that God exists. So one comment here um, was left in my video on Augustine, St. Augustine's argument for the existence of God. And this comment says, quote, it's a long way from here, what I talked about in the video, to talking snakes. Another comment on my video on Dr. Edward Fazer's argument for the existence of God, his rationalist proof, says in part that none of this points toward the truth of Christianity. And a final comment left in my video on the contingency argument for the existence of God says, quote, if you are arguing for the Christian God, you have problems, as in this argument doesn't prove the Christian God. Now, all of these were posted, like I said, on videos arguing for the existence of God from philosophy. Nowhere in any of these videos did I try to defend Christianity, the specific Christian doctrines, or even mention that I'm a Christian. But the commenters quoted above are raising the idea that my argument doesn't prove a distinctly Christian God as an objection to my position, with the assumption that my videos are trying to establish not just the existence of God, but specifically Christian doctrines like the talking snake from the book of Genesis. And I can certainly see why this might be, why people might think this. After all, I personally definitely see my efforts to defend the existence of God philosophically as part of a larger intellectual defense of the Catholic faith. But that's just my personal motivation behind these videos. That's not something intrinsic to the very arguments I'm offering. You see, up until basically this video, I kept my channel focused on plain theistic apologetics without talking about distinctive Catholic or Christian doctrines. The reason I do this isn't that I don't think these doctrines are true. I, I do. I certainly do think they're true. But that I firmly believe in the idea that it's possible to argue for one tenet of Catholicism or one tenet of Christianity more broadly without committing yourself to arguing for the whole thing all at once. In fact, I think this is not just possible, but sometimes absolutely necessary if you want to have a productive conversation about apologetics. Because honestly, I just don't think it's practical to present the full case for Catholicism or the full case for Christianity in one go. A really good image for why this is can be found in a 2014 article on Catholic.com by Matt Fratt. It's called The Apologetics Mansion. Fratt asks us to imagine a building, three stories tall. The first floor of this building is full of people who believe in God, but don't believe in distinctly Christian ideas about God don't believe in distinctly Christian doctrines like the resurrection of the Trinity. Think of someone like Aristotle, who was able to argue his way to the existence of God, but didn't have the benefit of divine revelation. Or someone like Thomas Jefferson, who believed in a supreme being, but not in Christianity. We can call this first floor the, the God of the philosopher's floor. It's filled with deists and theists, but not Christians and Catholics. But the second floor is occupied by Protestants and Christians who accept the divinity of Christ and the historicity of the resurrection and other distinctly Christian ideas, but not distinctly Catholic doctrines. We could call this the mere Christian floor or something like that. But then on the third floor, you find people who accept distinctively Catholic doctrines like apostolic succession or the infallibility of the Pope. Now notice a few things about this building. First, notice that each floor is being kept up by the floors underneath it. 
The mere Christian floor can't stand without the god of the philosopher floor. And the Catholic floor can't stand without either the god of the philosopher's floor or the mere Christian floors. The floors build on each other, using each other as a foundation. Next, notice how to get to the upper floors, you have to go through the lower floors first. You can't climb the stairs up to the third floor if you don't walk through floors one and two. Now, what Frad suggests is that Catholic apologetics, done right, needs to resemble this building. If you want to convince someone that the Catholic faith is true, you have to lead him through the building one floor at a time. First, you need to get him inside the building, through the front door, on the first floor. You need to get him believing in the God of the philosophers. And you can do this with logical arguments. Next, after that, you have to convince him that Jesus of Nazareth is divine and that therefore we can trust what he says. And this, I would say, is more the domain of history. After we do the philosophical arguments to establish the existence of God, we can do historical arguments to prove things like the resurrection and that Christ's authority is therefore reliable because he rose from the dead. And then after we do that, we finally have to convince this person that the Catholic Church, which has existed in an unbroken chain of successions for 2,000 years, was ordained by Christ who said that on this rock I will build my church. That's the third stage of Catholic apologetics. If you try to take these steps out of order, if you try to take these stages and combine them into one, um, and say, argue for the infallibility of the Pope with someone who doesn't even believe that God exists, you're not going to have a productive conversation. It would be like shouting down from the third floor to a friend outside the building, asking him to come and join you without unlocking the front door of the house and showing him the stairs to get up to the third floor. And I think we need to recognize that it takes some time to get through the different parts of the house and find the staircase to get up to the next level. We shouldn't expect someone who just thought his way into believing that God exists to immediately accept every distinctive Christian doctrine. So we shouldn't barrage people with arguments for the existence of God, the divinity of Christ, the infallibility of the Pope, all this at the same time, as if giving all these arguments all at once will suddenly make someone Catholic. To use a way, way, way overused saying, we need to be prepared to meet people where they're at. Now, to any Catholics watching this video, that would be my advice. To any non-Catholics, and in particular any atheists or agnostics watching this one, I hope you will understand a bit more where Catholic apologists are coming from. We're not trying, when we offer an argument for the existence of God, to prove all of Christianity at once. So if that argument, like Aquinas's five ways or something like that, doesn't leave you satisfied in the existence of the Christian God, but only in the kind of the God of the philosophers, that's the point. So don't be surprised about that. I think the best way to describe what I've been doing so far on this channel is to say that I'm trying to get people in that front door of that house, try to get them into that first floor of the God of the philosophers, kind of a pre-evangelization so they can, after they believe in the God of philosophers, I can bring them up the stairs to the second and third floor. So it's not surprising then if one of my videos doesn't leave you on the top of floor three of that house. It wasn't trying to get you there. It was just trying to get you into, into the door, into floor one. But whatever floor you're standing on right now, I hope you've enjoyed this video. And please consider subscribing to this channel to stay informed on upcoming content. Thanks and God bless.